mighty name we have worshipped. Have your seat before the Lord. Praise God. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I released a prophecy and I wrote it in my WhatsApp status that a general was going to pass away. How many of you read it? Huh? You saw it? And within one week, it happened. The passing away of that, many people don't know him and I don't know him. You understand me? But he's a general in the spirit. It's a message to the body. It's both of the mercies of God and of the judgment of God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The passing away of that man is of the mercies of God and of the what? Judgment of God. He is in glory, but there is a message to the body. And those that the message concerns, they've already understood. Amen. God will help us in Jesus' name. Tonight is a night of answers. In Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19, he said, If ye be willing and obedient, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Your blessing is tied to your willingness and obedience. Amen. Your blessings is tied to your willingness and obedience in the Lord. Many of us, we have come to a place where we have received him as our God. Many of us have been saved by our God. Amen. But he is not yet our Lord. Just like many wives have married and they have now a husband. They've now had husband. Their husband now have paid their dowry. But the husband has not become their Lord. Sarah called Abraham. He said, my Lord. So my husband is different from my Lord. And the thin line or the big gulf is willingness and obedience. That is the same way that many Christians find themselves today. Is God, but he is not Lord. The pursuit of the believer and our submission to him is what will determine either he is our Lord or just our God. You see, demons don't care if God is your God. Is somebody here? In fact, God is their God too. He said the father of all. The father of who? All spirits. So demons don't care if he's your God. But demons care if he's your Lord. If he's your Lord of hosts. Demons don't care if he's your Lord. If he's your God. But they care <laughs> if he's your Lord. And it is not in the same. It's not in the professing. Ah, uh, God is God. I am saved by God. It is your willingness and your obedience. The willingness and the obedience of the believer begins from the heart. The response of the heart to the things of God. Is God able to break? What level is God able to break you? What level is your dealing with God? What are you still struggling with in your life? You will still want to take charge of certain aspects of your life. You still want to be in control. Now, as long as you are in that position where you find yourself trying to be in control of certain aspects of your life, you are denying him the lordship. You are denying him the lordship. As long as certain aspect of your life is defying the law of your God, that aspect of your life could be your finances. It could be your relationship. It could be your character. As long as those aspects of your life is denying the law of your God, you are denying him lordship over your life. And these are the things that demons care to watch. That is why you can be born again and yet the enemy will be flogging you. You can be born again and the enemy will still be pursuing you your dream. It shows the level of his lordship. The level of what? Somebody is not happy this night. Maybe they pursue you last night. I don't know. The level of his lordship in your life, it's reflected in these spiritual experiences. You know, somebody called me and he was like, I had a dream. A pastor, for that matter. And they were pressing him. Then he wanted to shout Jesus. Then he said he was shouting G. They pressed him the more. He said G. The G was G inside. If they pressed him the more and he was G, G. After the seventh time, Jesus came out. Then he woke up. He was sweating like a barbecue. And I said to him, I said, that reflected the level of his lordship. Is your God, but he's not Lord. When you give Satan a room, he will take your house. 
When you give him a meter, he has taken the 100 meter. That's why the Bible said, give no room to, give no room to the devil. Submission must be total. Submission must be conclusive. It must be conclusive submission to God. Every aspect of your life that is not submitted unto him, you need to walk and walk and walk on it. You need to walk and walk and walk on it. How far you will go is dependent on your willingness and obedience. Listen to me. It is a walk. Tell your neighbor, say, this journey with God is a walk. It's a walk. A walk through a process of time. You are praying, God bless me financially. And God said to you by a whisper. He said, from henceforth, begin to give like you don't have a plan. Begin to give like what? You don't have a plan. You ask him to bless you financially. He said, begin to give as if you don't have what? A plan. Now, your success or your financial blessing is tied to that instruction. Your ability to dive into it and persuasively pursue until you become a reality of who is blessed by God. Let me tell you, how long you pursue is good, but how well you pursue is more important. Because when it gives you an instruction, the risk that you take in obeying, it matters. Tell your neighbor, say the risk involved in obedience matters. Say, when I pray, and when you pray, it's not going to be reflecting the same. When I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let me tell you, all the blood I have shed in the name of Jesus will show. <laughs> How many of you play some funny uh, video games? All these video games where they used to box themselves. Now, when you box some people, you will see that the life will be reducing. The same way it is, when you pray and say, in the name of Jesus, the, the blood and the sweat you are paid in the name of Jesus will show on your radar. So, it will determine what the reaction of the devils around you to you. Like, look at him calling the name of Jesus. Like, look at him. Look, just look at him. The risk that you take in obedience, it matters. Laying it down willingly, obediently, persuaded that at the end it pays off. That at the end it pays off. The risk that is involved. Let me tell you, if there is no risk involved in your work, there is no glory in sight. If there is no risk, you are only giving out of abundance. You have never given all. You are only giving when it is convenient. You have never given all. You are only praying when there is no sleep. You have never prayed when sleep is, is like the poor wine on your head. How many of you know that kind of sleep? It will be as if they open your head, then pour 50% alcohol inside your head, and you are still praying. Because you are persuaded that something is telling you to pray. The risk that is involved in your willing obedience will show forth in the glory that is to come. That is why willing obedience matters. We cannot end the same way. Not because we did not inherit the same thing. We cannot end the same way. Not because we, we didn't inherit the same thing but because we responded differently. Amen. Heaven will be different for us <laughs> because we responded to the calls differently. Is somebody here tonight? Are you persuaded by the things that God has spoken to you? Are you persuaded to pursue it with all your life, to empty yourself, to leave nothing, no stone unturned until you become that which he wants you to become? If you be willing and obedient, this is the this is the hallmark of willingness and obedience. Ye shall eat the fruit of the land. He said, But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with a sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. This is what destroys many believers. I want you to know that when you are working with God, you need to put your wisdom aside. Amen. You need to do what? Put your wisdom aside. God will never be logical. Whenever you are trying to logically follow God, you are already losing out. You can imagine a God, you finished fasting last week, 
then this week on a good Monday morning you just wanted to drink tea and cross your leg and watch a TV program and it says start fasting drop your tea now God is not logical and let me tell you when you are when God the work you have with God is logical you are not you are not receiving anything from the spirit realm you are not if God is not interrupting you you are not important in the agenda of God if you are not being interrupted we are too convinced the Christianity we are practicing is too convenient there must be interruption in your in your in your life there are times you are prepared to go out he said go back stay indoor there are times you are going to buy something for yourself he tells you no this morning your hand you there must be divine interruption if you will be at the place where he wants you to be at the end Christians we don't love being interrupted you've laid down your plans good to have plans good but we don't want to be interrupted why because we are we are too fleshly if ye be willing and obedient let me let you know that the interruption of God is not only about worldly things it's even concerning spiritual things amen God can interrupt your prayer is somebody hearing that God can interrupt what your prayers he can tell you stop praying now stand up start worshiping and you say oh I want to pray he said, no, I, I'm not hearing prayer now. I'm in, I'm in the mood of worship. God can interrupt you physically and spiritually. Your willingness to adhere to divine interruption. Somebody said divine interruption. Somebody is a wonderful washer now. You remove that person from the washing department. And he said, go and wash toilet. Join the sanctuary. That interruption can make pentiraska to leave the church that interruption can make a pentiraska to leave the church ah they did not see anybody in the church it's me is it because i don't have a job and the glory may be hidden in the toilet if you be willing and obedient you will be ready for interruptions god able to interrupt your plans god able to eat into your time god able to enter into your family and reschedule things tonight god will do a new thing for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Now we are set to pray. We are praying very soon from Jeremiah chapter 16. Shine on me, shine on me. Ezekiel 16. Holy Spirit, shine on me. Shine on me, shine on me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, shine on me. Rain on me, rain on me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, rain on me, 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 Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 